Hi, my name is Elias. Niklas. And we are from the band Face Legacy. You are listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. We yes. Or Fuck yeah. And Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Chris. And Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm such a. I don't even yeah. know why I came back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why am I back? I was actually just watching the video um, for Hear Us Out, and I noticed something that I absolutely loved in that video. And it's not something I see a lot in with heavy music. And that was the use of a detuned Stratocaster. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's so, true. So why? I'm just curious, because with a lot of heavy bands or metal bands, like a detuned strat is like faux pas, right? What what made yeah. you choose to do that? I think I might answer this one because I made the main riff for the song a couple of years ago, and I was at, at our workplace, which is the same place with the rehearsal space, and I had like acoustic guitar, so I detuned it to drop D. The song is now in the drop C tuning, but yeah. I had it in the drop D. So I started to play that riff with that guitar. And to me, it sounded kind of like this Southern rock type of slingy guitar type of riff. So that's why we chose to do it kind of like in the same way with electric guitars. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason, yeah. Yeah, I was actually kind of shocked because... <laughs> one second here, I'll show you. I'm one of the only people I know wow. with a Strat and Drop C. I'm almost yeah. like the only person I know that does it. And when I saw it, I was like, these people are my brothers. I love <laughs> it. That's a sick <laughs> guitar right there. Yeah, that's really cool. yeah, this is actually a custom shop strat. Nice. Um, but this, I put this in, which is a John Petrucci uh, pickup from DiMarzio. Yeah. The Crunch. I lab. like DiMarzio's too. Yeah. The, uh, I actually collect, collect guitars too. Yeah, me, I, I have a few. <laughs> this one back here is a 1984 Ibanez DT350 which is it is, like the X series it is the X series yes yeah I, I know that one yeah it's a great guitar sounds killer yeah. those are fast they're fast and they're hard to find now too they're, that's true yeah I, e I, I emailed Ibanez and I asked them hey I don't I like because it was gifted to me and I was like I don't, I don't have the whammy bar and the guy yeah. just started. Uh, suddenly, I was on an email chain with all of Ibanez because they were just sharing photos of the guitar. I was like, "But I need really? the Miami bar, yeah." Because it's That's a collector's cool. edition guitar, which I which I didn't know. But anyways, back to the band. <laughs> um, I just thought that was very cool and and kind of a courageous thing to do to use, like a like a traditional, like you say, southern rock kind of guitar. Mm -hmm. in, in a heavy track it's just not something you see very often yeah that's true that's how we like it that's kind of our approach from the beginning because we started as like a hard rock band but then we've tuned down because it's fitting like Nicholas's it's ball right. yeah it costs better and, yeah yeah, yeah it, it is true when you tune stuff down it becomes a lot easier to sing <laughs> usually <laughs> and also when I'm the backing vocal guy yeah. um, I like harmonics are a bit easier because when when it's like a standard tuning they're like really high right so that's how i can hit the harmonics better maybe maybe you're like me when when i started singing in standard tuning i was like now i know why all those like, 80s guys wore tight leather pants i'm a huge fan i have my own spotify list that's called hair middle library Nice, yes, 150 songs, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that that music because that's like back in the day, and now we're no, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. I, yeah, I, I will say this though: you can hear that influence in your music, and it's something that I love. You know, Thanks, it's man. it it's not it doesn't sound like hair metal at all, but you yeah. like the groove and like that. It's just like it feels like a rock band. Do you know <clears throat> what I mean? Like a yeah, heavy definitely. rock band, 
Yeah. It, was that an intentional decision or is that something that just kind of happened? We used to listen to a lot of hair metal back in that. Yeah. Like teenage years. Rat and Motley Crue and yeah. Firehouse. Yeah. Firehouse. Yeah. Baby, Only don't <laughs> underground me band. DJ is near. Yeah, we used to listen to those bands a lot. So <laughs> that's kind of how we got to the music that we are doing today. We've, we've known each other for like 13 years, which yeah. is not much, but we are young guys. So that's a lot for us. Yeah. Well, I'm young. I don't know about this guy. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm not. I'm definitely not young. I'm a fat old metalhead. And I just stole Bruce's, <laughs> I, I just stole Bruce's tagline. That's my but, uh, that's my hashtag. Old fat metal guy. I know. That's, that's true. I, I checked it. your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you did that. Um <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Are, That's why I have pictures of me in my Speedo bikini. From the back in the day. Oh, yeah, from yesterday. I post them all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bruce always gets That's off awesome, topic. Right? So are you guys the main writers in the band then? Yeah. Yeah, and also our producer, Demo. Yes. Yeah. So it's oh. kind of like us two doing the demos with Demo and Demo. Our producer brings like some different spices, but usually it's like me or Nicholas have some really Very badass cool. riff, and oh, we started awesome. working from it. Yeah, nice. cool. So, th- are you? Did you record this record yourself, or no? It's done with them. Yeah, family. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, I asked this question of everyone because of how technology is changing. Um, when you were recording, were you using real amps, amp sims? What were you using? You want to guess? No. I want you to tell me. <laughs> well, we used Helix, Line 6 oh, Helix. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's a great unit. Yeah, no, it is. We had like the biggest sounds ever. We have like eight layers of guitars there. We have like two doubled guitars each. Mm. Yeah. So there's like four different sounds for both of us yes yeah Yeah. and that takes a while to do that's not something that yeah yeah because like i don't know if if your producer is anything like me or a lot of producers i know but tuning happens Mm -hmm. you know every few bars (laughs) really struggle with that i mean we have had like six or eight different guitars when we try to pick up the best ones that are staying in the tune and also sounding good. So yeah. I had like I switched different guitars for different leads and and but one guitar stood up the best and it's Nicholas's uh 1984 reissue Kramer Barrett. Yeah. Oh yeah. what a guitar. Yeah, that's one. But it's, it's, it's one with the bullseye. I know the guitar. That thing that's is a it. speed guitar. demon. Yeah. yeah, that was the, <laughs> the one we used the most for the rhythm parts. Mm. Was that does that have a finished neck on it, like a finished neck on it, or is it raw? That's like clear coat, but it's like clear coat. It's really light. Yeah, yeah, B- beautiful guitar. Um, now we'll ask tech question. Then I'll let Bruce take over. Did you leave the stock pickups in the Kramer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And is it I one of the is it one of the new reissues? Yeah. I think it was made in 2014. Two, yeah. It has the Seymour Duncan JB, but it has this coil split. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Bruce? Are we done? You want no. To know, you want to know what they had for breakfast? Or, I mean, what do you Fuck. <laughs> <what are you, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how did you guys sign with uh, Adeline Music? How did that come about? We do a lot of work with them. They're great over there. Elias can answer, answer that. Yeah, I mean, we were part of this program that is here in Finland called Rock Academy, Rock Academy Finland, where they take these like new bands and make them like singles and music videos just to get to know the music business. So that's that's nothing to do with papers or anything like mm-hmm. that. Not, nothing's contracted. Right. But we made two songs and the later one, which was called United as One, is also going to be included on our album. But we released that to the Rock Academy. And one evening I went home and I, I, I tend to do the 
contacting while I have those songs on YouTube. And I sent the link to a couple of guys. I think I sent it to Eric Martin, someone of Eclipse. Mm-hmm. He liked it. And then I knew that Silke Ulysirnia, who is like PR person for him and Nightwish, I, I, I think she was or still is. But anyway, so I sent, sent the uh, music video over to her on Facebook. And then she was like, this is really good. And of course, I was like honored because she's like a, such a big figure, figure in the Finnish music business. And then she's working for the Out of Line and she sent it over. And then I think we traded emails with the label for like four months and we met them in the june of 2018 in helsinki 19 19 yeah nice so that's how how we got started and then they wanted us to make five new songs as demos and we did it and they liked them sweet nice yeah. end of the story <laughs> end of the story or it's actually just the beginning of the story that's true yeah, for sure yeah um you you brought something up that I that I actually find very interesting. You said you were part of something called the Rock Academy. What what is that? You want to tell about it? Is it like a government program or? Yeah, they they got get the funds from the government, but it's kind of like part of the youth work of Finland. Yeah, they have like different cities that have different academies, but they are part of the one peak academy it is actually really hard to explain well if you're not yeah i mean is yeah. it basically like a youth program yeah 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 to, to, keep, keep, these, to, like, keep, young to keep youth doing stuff yeah. yeah and they held these clinics with all the great big musicians of finland and also one guy that is behind it here from the u.s he lives in turku in the southern finland it's Douglas Blair of Wasp. So he's oh, like wow. a friend of ours. And he's been helping us too. And we've seen like six times him on the clinics. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. It's I, I love watching when there's a support system for musicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like look at what that program did for you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 That's true. We're we all like Everything. At, yeah, we owe everything <laughs> for that because yeah. when we played our first kick at the youth center here, uh, the boss of the Rock Academy, Juvaskla, which is our hometown, after the first gig, he was like, hey guys, would you like to be a part of it? So after the first gig, we got to the program wow. and when we released the single out of it, we got signed. That's beautiful. So, yeah, they help like small bands to not go to the dark holes of music business <laughs> which is yeah. good yeah you don't yeah. want to go in the dark holes of the music business yeah yeah um what about touring do you guys have any shows planned not right now mm. it's kind of hard here because finland is not that big country so all the venues especially in our hometown are packed with the everyone band, yeah. got canceled before covid yeah yeah. Why so do it's, you? It's hard. We are planning to do it. Yeah. Why do you think you just mentioned that Finland is so small? Why do you think there are so many metal bands coming out of such a small country? I think it's way above the norm of pretty much probably any other country, except maybe Norway. Well, I I think that Finland is actually the capital of metal. Yeah. There was yeah. Um, it's hard to say. I think that we have the roots deep into the culture because the winters are long and we are not mm-hmm. like we can't stay outside for a long time when it's like 20 minus Celsius degrees right. so when we have bands like children of bottom guitar heroes like Alexi Laiho was right so a lot of kids are like looking them as like gods mm-hmm. and they want to do the same stuff because they think that it's possible so that's why I think that 
a lot of kids because we cannot go outside and play football. Mm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we go we go to the garages and rehearsal places and play guitar. Yeah. I'm just curious because there's definitely an, an inordinate amount of metal Great bands, metal bands. Coming, yeah, coming from mm-hmm. such a small country. Yeah, there is a lot of bands. I think sure. out of all the interviews, like Bruce and I have been doing interviews. Well, Bruce has been doing interviews for a long time, but we podcast for what, two years? before I had to take a break and now we're back. But in those two years, predominantly most of the metal bands, like if we were to divide them up by country, I, w- I would put Finland at the top. Yeah. Even our other co-host is in a Finnish band, Silentium. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know that. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Rina. Yeah. Rina usually joined us, but her, she's not feeling well today, but she's usually our other host. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, there's I a lot. They are, they're from like, 60 kilometers from our town. Mm-hmm. They're not from a far away from here. Right. Yeah. That's an idea. It's like half an hour. If the speed yeah. limit is 100 kilometers an hour, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> even know, I don't know what 100 kilometers means. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have the miles. We don't, we don't uh, have no, except uh, everyone is going always 100 miles per hour. <laughs> right. But the American system makes so much more sense. Sure. Are you sure? <laughs> Why do you say that someone is the size of a feet? Because everyone's feet are different. Sizes. Hey, 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 wait a second here. Chris, you going to help me out? No. <laughs> I, I, li- I live in the U.S., but I'm from Canada, and the metric system is just, it makes sense. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's Every, why we use ev- Everything's a division of 10. It's really easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That doesn't make any and, sense. Yeah. Like, like for instance, minus 40 Celsius is minus 40 Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, but, what? Plus, yeah. But but plus 40 things? Celsius is like that's, 105 that's or story. something yeah. Fahrenheit. Because no not, idea what, what like Fahrenheit are, except Bon Jovi album was like 7,800 <laughs> Fahrenheit. <laughs> All right, enough. Our, <laughs> we'll stop bugging Bruce. We'll stop bugging him. Are you his got... inferior units of measure. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> you're a unit. Are you guys planning on? Are you guys planning on doing the uh, the new business model? I guess so to speak, where releasing a single every four to six weeks, or are you still going to put together a record or a product? Mm. You know, a full product. We are going to release a full record. But I'd prefer us to release as many singles as possible because yeah. nowadays the Love Spotify it. system is is kind of like preferring singles because, because yeah. you can get like uh, songs to one playlist. You cannot get albums to a playlist. So back in the day, you had released like two singles to people to buy the album. Right. But now you got to <laughs> release singles for people to listen to the whole album. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So singles are, I think they are the future right now. Yeah, I think that's the new model for sure. Well, and and especially right now when you're coming out of COVID, if you could release like a single every month, month and a half or so, right? Mm-hmm. And then by the time you go tour, you have a set ready to go and mm-hmm. all the songs have been released. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Slowly. So I'm old, I'm old school. I would, you know, I still like the whole, we were just talking to uh, the last interview about the whole you know product the album start to finish with the artwork and all that stuff so i see it both ways Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. i think it's still preferable in the rock or metal scene to release the album because i think for us the album is is kind of like a compilation of different songs that make this one big package and if we release songs like as individuals the story or the concept wouldn't be as clear as right as as an album yeah okay do you have a message that you want to get out with your music or is every song individual well there's mm, how will i say for sure yeah i like to write things that mean something and just not be as like I am just saying something. Yeah. I think people can hear if you are 
thinking about something that isn't meaning anything to you. Mm-hmm. That's See? that's kind of like the thing why we have so many great hits from back in the day in all kinds of different genres because they were all talking about the subjects that mm-hmm. mean a lot to them. Right. What's it like writing lyrics when English isn't your first language? It's actually easier for me. Really? Yeah. How come? That's Explain. In... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. I, I, think, I... I think it's because I've been always writing in English and not not that much in Finnish. Yeah. I don't know. I think that there are like positive things to both languages, Finnish and English. Mm-hmm. Finnish is like it's one of the most complicated languages in the world. You can say many things differently, but in English, you have these sh- certain fl- frames that are like familiar to f- people. Yeah. So that's why you have easier like frames to write a song in English mm. about cool. the things that you care about. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I only speak one language and I always admire people that are like bilingual or even multilingual, I should say, because you guys probably speak more than just English and Finnish, I'm sure. But um... <laughs> so we have, to study, of... we have to study Swedish in school, yeah. but no one really knows. Right. <laughs> so you study three languages in school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We study like six years from nine years in school, English, and then like three years of Swedish. Like in like in the high school and the primary school, right? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, but I just I I always admire people that have that ability to. Like I don't even I try to understand it often. Like, do you think in Finnish, and then translate it to English, or like, do you think in English and like I don't even know how that works. I want to know. Oh, how do that's you... actually kind of yeah. complicated. I I yeah. don't really. Because uh, in Finland, when we watch TV, we have a lot of American and English shows. Mm. Okay. So we are exposed to the language since like early. It's kids. Childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Video games. Yeah, video games too. Yeah. So it sounds like familiar to us from the childhood. So gotcha. when we studied for like six years, you you have to be like, really stupid if you don't learn anything <laughs> right <laughs> or like really unmotivated but to me it's it's kind of like those languages are two different things i can say the same things that i would say in Finnish. i would say them in english but it's not like a struggle for me mm. no i know it's not a struggle but i'm Crazy. just thinking of, i'm just thinking of the thought like when you go to say something in english do you think about it in like or sing something in english do you think about it in Finnish and translate it in your head out to English? Or do you well, just, does this come out normally? It, it comes out like automatically, I yeah. would say. I think of a subject in Finnish, but then I write about it in English. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always really interested in it because like, it seems so advanced, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But it, it it seems like, like my friend Andy was here, uh, and he speaks five languages, and he's from wow. Switzerland. That's cool. That's so like you phone him, and he he gives it in Italian, and he gives it in, like his voice. Yeah, they have like uh, three different co- like languages inside Switzerland. Yeah, it's, it's a weird country for sure. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So like we would go out. We went out for Italian, and he's speaking Italian to people. And then we ran into some Swedish people. He's speaking German to them or French or whatever. I was just like, oh. what the hell is going on here, man? He speaks every yeah. language. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I'm like, no wonder I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I speak one language <laughs> <Right>. barely. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, with languages like Swedish and uh, I think it's Norway's, like, uh, is it Norway? So, Danish uh, and those like northern countries, except Finland, Finnish, they are, they are like really similar to it, each other. We, we have like whole different language. There's, I think there's like nothing like Finnish in the other countries. 
Interesting. Interesting. Well, I didn't mean to turn this into a podcast about language. It's not <laughs> about not nothing. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's not what I was trying to do. We should Bruce, bring it back yeah. to the music, please. We're running up against time anyway, but what's next for you guys? What's next for uh, the band? And what can we look forward to? Uh, it's about releasing, releasing music. music. Yeah. Yeah. And waiting for the album. Yeah. And have, we do you have time frames on any of that? Uh, probably next year. Next year. Yeah. That's, that's right now the future. Gotcha. So the next single in the, in the new year? Yeah, I think in January, probably. Okay. Yeah, that, so Hear Us Out was basically just a way to introduce you guys. And we then really one single before it was called The Astros on the Crown. Oh, yeah. oh so I we didn't have know that. Two singles now out. Okay. So yeah. those singles were kind of an introduction, and next year is where you really start to push yeah. even yeah. harder. Nice. Yeah, because then it, it's going to be the album too. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so excited for you guys. And if Thank fans you. want to find you, can you drop your social links or give us all your information? We are on Instagram. We Fast are on Legacy. yeah, Fast Legacy on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, those two. Well, what are they, What should they look for on those platforms? Probably pre- pictures of young guys <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and some guitars ready. <laughs> right, just, just pictures of young guys. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> young guys! What, what All music? right, well, we All went down. Young dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Mott the hoople called. Wow, they want their young dudes back. Um, so... <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but they should look face the legacy, right? That's what they should look yeah, for. Yeah. Facebook.com slash face the legacy. Is that your yeah. Facebook link? Cool. Anyway, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time. Thank we finally got it done. Big yeah, fan of the song. Yeah. Big fan of the song. Looking heavy for more strat. stuff. Keep rocking. Cool. Yeah. Bye-bye. Cool. See you guys. Keep us in touch as you release new singles so we can share them. Yeah. All for right, sure. man. Yeah. Be well. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Who out there? Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together, we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you.